There is really a large category of people that would like to be considered holy men. I want to begin by saying, you know, myself, I am not a holy man, and uh, neither are the uh, priests or a monk or rabbis or preachers or politicians, businessmen, celebrities, uh, philosophers, doctors, and uh, philanthropists, even Indian chief, even medicine men or women. These are people that are not holy people. Nikitanetikatta a Among our Dene, every now and then people get curious and uh, they want to know about holy man. And uh, there is really a large category of people that would like to be considered, I guess, holy men. I want to begin by saying, you know, myself, I am not a holy man. I am by all means not in that category at all. And uh, neither are the uh, priests or a monk or any of the people that uh, might be recognized as rabbis or preachers or some other type of uh, person, politicians, businessmen, celebrities, uh, philosophers, doctors, and uh, just uh, philanthropists, even Indian chief even medicine men or women. These are people that are not holy people. And the reason that I say that is because there are only a select group of individuals that are considered holy people. And they are not here with us because when you achieve the complete honest status of being a holy person, you are going to be among the holy people. That's the only place that a holy person can exist is in the presence of holy people and in their realm, and uh, that is what they achieve as a holy person or as a holy being. But uh, I have to mention this because it is that the people known as Anasaza, Ana, which is different than us, and Asaza is the ancient ones that were different than us. And the, the us, of course, is the Dene. Our people had uh, teachings that were very sacred, and they were told that they came directly from the holy people. So all of the ceremonies, all of the songs, all of the prayers, none of that is made up. The ones that are really important are things of the sacred nature that were given at a certain time, under certain conditions, and they were given by holy people. Now, it is that they may have been messengers, special messengers, and that's what holy people are, is sometimes they have select messengers in that that come and uh, protect or be give information. And uh, those are the holy people. And they don't remain among us, and they're not, you know, something that uh, everybody can have the experience of having these sacred people or holy people appear to them. There are some very select people that have these... Uh, visitation of holy people. It does not occur to anyone and everyone. The uh, messengers are responsible to the holy people that are at the head of all the other holy people. Now people want to always ask, you know, about holy people and holy men. And uh, but holy people are the ones that are in charge of everything, the universe, the earth, and everything that is in existence that we can view. Now, there is one that is the supreme being, that is the uh, one that is responsible for it all, and then there are these sub-holy people that are very important. And uh, I think it's important for people to understand, you know, when uh, we talk about holy people and sacred beings, there are sacred beings that are not holy people. There are holy men that are not holy people in a way that we understand it. They represent and they are responsible to the holy people. They might be messengers to give guidance or they might be 
messengers to uh, deliver something in answer to a prayer. But nonetheless, it is that these beings do not appear to just anyone. Earlier, we had talked about the Yebiche uh, ceremony, uh, which is the nine-day ceremony. Nastetje is what we call it. And they do have two sacred beings that appear. Some say it is a man and, and a woman, and some say it is two men. And so it is that uh, sometimes there is confusion as to how people talk about them. But it is that two sacred beings appear to a young boy that is 12 years old, and he is the one that is asking the questions about the lack of a ceremony. And it is also in fulfilling the, um, what the changing woman said before she left and took her children to the east. She says, I am not going to be able to give you the eighth ceremony. I'll give you seven ceremonies, and then the eighth one you're going to have to get from a man. And so it was that she promised that there would be a man that would bring the eighth ceremony. And that is the Nastetje ceremony, and that that was given to the 12-year-old boy. And he organized the dancing and the uh, making of the uh, dry painting or sand painting, and to have a portal made so that the holy people can come into this world and to be among us. And it is that the holy people can be among us, but we don't know it. There are certain sacred places, and there are sacred areas in that where we can actually be among the holy people and feel their presence. But you have to prepare yourself all different types of ways, mentally, emotionally, clean yourself physically, and prepare yourself spiritually by praying and by preparing yourself to be among the holy people. You may not see them, but you feel them. And that's the way the ceremony, Nastetje, is supposed to be. It's called Ndakai or Nakai. That means walking with the holy people, walking among the holy people. And the uh, Anasaza as a people, a civilization, as I begin to mention, these people, at some point, they tried to tell all of the other people they had come in contact with, the Pueblo people, the Cliff Dwellers, and the, uh, the other groups of people, and even the Dene. When they came among our people, they tried to convince everyone that they were the holy people and they were equal to the gods. And it was that they tried to uh, impose that doctrine of theirs on other, uh, of the other people in that that were in the area. And the, they wanted to be worshiped. And they thought that they had better plans than that to way to live life. And eventually the holy people are the ones that destroyed the Anasaza. You cannot go against the plans that the holy people have. And it is that, uh, we are taught is the ne, case, which is to think, nata, which is the plan, and then of course to live a life or to move in a way that uh, the holy people would want to have you live your life or to move in your life, and then of course the last is the idea of uh, hope and faith and what the holy people can do for you and do for uh, people that uh, tr try to do the things that the holy people expect of them. And so this is where the uh, people that lived among us, like first man and first woman, we mention often, but there are other people that were leaders. These were people that were just like uh, medicine men, medicine women, and that they were not holy in any way, but they did have very special gifts in that, that they could help the people uh, through the various trials in that that our people had. And so it is really important to understand that anybody and anyone that thinks that they are holy men or holy women on the earth today is not possible. Once you acquire that status of completely being holy, you are then going to be among the holy people and you will not be here. And that goes for all of the people that I had mentioned earlier. And so it is that I hope it answers some of the questions that people have. It is a very great responsibility to learn the correct idea of how the holy people have special ways of dealing with us, the five-fingered being, while being here in the third world, in the yellow world. And these are based on the things that we are told. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.